Hi everyone, today we're excited to present our microcontroller mini project, the DIY drum kit. From me, Mr. Tira Wachepanyam and Mr. Christine Tirasak. Here's a quick overview of what we'll cover in the presentation. Let's begin with the problem we aim to solve. As a music lover, I've always wanted to play the drum. However, traditional drum kits are expensive and difficult to transport. Our solution is a DIY drum kit that is both affordable and portable. It is designed to be easy to play and allows you to record demos, providing a realistic drumming experience using a real drumstick. Here's an overview of our project. It consists of two main parts, the drum and the controller part. The drum part uses a full PCO electric sensor to detect the hits from the drumstick. The control part includes a potentiometer to control the volume and LED to indicate which drum part is hit. How do we send a signal to the computer really? Actually, first, we need to understand three concepts, MIDI Arduino, MIDI and Arduino, and flat shape. What is MIDI? MIDI or Musical Instrument Digital Interface is a standard that allows electronic instruments and computers to communicate. The Arduino Uno R3 doesn't natively support MIDI over USB, so we had to modify it. This involved flashing the firmware to enable the MIDI communication. But how to do it? Okay, to modify the Arduino, we used MIDI controller library. This required both physical modifications and running specific code on the command line to flash the firmware. In MIDI, there are three main types of event we used. North on indicates key press, node off indicates key release, and both including the node number and velocity. Control event used to control the volume. Mapping a MIDI node is required modification and configuration to mapping the nodes sent from the Arduino to node encouraged band. There are two main parts, which is control surface and MIDI node, and velocity and volume. To map the MIDI node from the Arduino to college band via USB, we utilize the modification of the MIDI control library. However, the MIDI node from the library didn't align perfectly with the corresponding node encouraged band. The discrepancy in the octave of notes require adjustment to match the actual drum notes. This include click, click, hit hat close, snare, and crash, which corresponding to C1 note, F sharp 1, D1, and C sharp, respectively. Here's a detailed look of the MIDI note mapping. So, first, MIDI foot close at F1, F sharp 1, MIDI value 42 on the on the left side, crash left, C sharp 2, MIDI value 49, kick C1, MIDI value 36, and snare sender D1, MIDI value 38. The two key components from realistic drum sound are velocity and volume. Volume controls the overall loudness of the drum sound adjustable via a potentiometer. Velocity indicates the force of the stick hit affecting the sound brightness and lines. This is the circuit of our project which consists of four main devices. The first device is Arduino Uno as the main logic of our program. The second one to heart of our project is the piezoelectric sensor which will act as the drum. It can convert the physical force like when it being hit to the electronic signal and we use the foam to cover it to protect it from being hit many times and also to make it feel more like the actual drums. Yeah. And it connects to three pins. The white one connects to the ground right here. The orange one connects to the five voltage VTC right here. And the last pin connects to the analog input, which we use A2 to A5. The next one is the LED, which we use uh, pin number two to number five. And you can see that it is the same color as the piezo and this indicates that this LED is corresponding to this piezo right here the yellow this, it is blue, this is the green and this is the red Yeah, and then it connects to the resistor with the ground right here the last one is the potentiometer which we connect with the same ground the same VCC and we use the pin A1 as the analog input this potentiometer will change the volume of the track and I will show you later. So now let's see the code. 
Okay, right now our uh, microchip using the MIDI firmware, as you can hear from the drum sounds. Okay, so to show you the code and how the MIDI data is actually transferred, we need to change it back to the serial firmware. To do this, you can just uh, first turn the board back to the FU mode by plug this to pin, which is the uh, reset and ground pin, and then run the script right here. The script Okay, and if the script is finished, you just can just unplug USB and plug it back. And now our Arduino will recognize uh, the device right here. And okay, just need a little bit change on the code for the configuration of, or sorry, for the debugging. Yes, okay. Okay, so our project utilizes the control surface library, which is a library for making Arduino become the MIDI controller. In this library, they provide us with many classes for the devices and they can allow us to you know, just config the pins and the address that you want to send the MIDI for and then the rest part of that this library will be doing for us. Okay, so for the main program, it just uh, has this function control surface of begin as the initialization function. So in this function, they just uh, set the pin mode and uh, set those buttons or the potentiometer or whatever object you have declared and for the loop it just update those uh, state and behavior of the device for example like if the button is pressed then the MIDI that I sent or if the potential potentiometer is rotating the data is also sent something like that okay so for our program we use the potentiometer which is the class from these libraries. In this class, they require two parameters, which is a pin for the potentiometer and the MIDI address that we want to send the data. And in this address, we contain two values, which is the controller number that indicates what type that we used for this control chain event and the channel. So for the controller number, we use the channel volume, which, which indicates that we want to control the volume as we want to use potentiometer for. And for the channel, we use channel number one, which is the default channel. So if I rotating the potentiometer right now, okay, you should, you should see the value decreasing because I rotate it back. And it, this one is indicate the channel volume, the, this one. And this one indicate the uh, value of potentiometer that is mapped. And if I rotating it upwards, it should go up, okay. For the PSO, they do not provide a class for us, so we have to create a class by ourselves right here from the custom class. PSO requires three inputs, which is the PSO pins, the pin for PSO sensor, the address that we want to send, and the LED pin, which is the output pin for the LED that will respond to the uh, that PSO. For example, like this PSO will correspond to the yellow uh, LED right there. Okay, so for the begin function, it just set the pin mode and turn the LED off initially. And for the update, just read the PSO. And if it's part this threshold, 80, it will uh, send the MIDI notes here. And it also turn on the LED. Uh, for the MIDI notes, we have to use the velocity, which is how hard the note is hit. And from PSO value 0 to 123, it is mapped to velocity that range from 0 to 127. The reason that I did not use that bar because uh, as you can see, if I hit with my drumstick, most of the time the, value, uh, the PSO value is just around like 100 to 200, sometimes go past 300. So I just reduce the bar because if I continue using the thousand, um, most of the time the well, those still will become only like 20 or 30, which is quite low. Um, yet, if I use this bar and I still use 200 to 127 for velocity, the volume is still too low because, as you can see, most of the time it is around 100 to 200. So, the velocity you get is around 30, 33% or one third, so I just change the lower bar of velocity to be a half, which is 64. In this case, we will get uh, like good, good enough volume. Okay, and this is just for 
uh, in the case that the value is just past the maximum threshold and if the peso is not past the active threshold we just turn the LED off and for example like this peso on the right I just connect it to the pin A2 right here it will send the node D1 which is a SNES center style and it is corresponding to LD pin 5 which is this pin and this is the yellow one and the rest PSO is also used this same way and as you can see right here if I click this PSO it will send node on this this node 26 and this one is 24 this one node uh, 31 this one is another node okay and that is all for the debugging. So let's see how it actually performed on the uh, garage band. So, so each peso will respond to different uh, nodes. For example, that this one, this one there, this one is a crush. Let's kick not this node here, and this one is a hi hat, which is running to this node. Okay, and. Okay, so you can also see from this, this is volume, and if I rotating the potentiometer, and this is the increasing. Oops, okay, the volume is high, and if I decrease the volume right now, you can see that the volume is just rotating down there. And there's some more noise sound right here. Ah, yeah. And that is this, our demos. Thank you for your time.